Thank you for coming to the A track. Well, uh, I should start the timer. Thank you for coming. Uh, before starting the presentation, uh, let me introduce ourselves. I'm Masashi Umezawa. I work for Sorabito, uh, this company, as a technical lead. And I also developed some open source small talk libraries, including six, Pankyolite, or so. And he is Kazunori Ueda. Uh, he is a full stack developer of Sorabito. Although he has been using Smalltalk for only a year, he invented Smalltalk Jenga, a funny game to explore the dynamic aspect of Smalltalk. He will demonstrate our auction system later, but uh, if you are interested in Smalltalk Jenga, you can see the demo tomorrow in the uh, show, show, show your project session. Okay, now let's start. Uh, we have built All Stalker, an online trading platform for used construction machinery. Uh, we started really small, but after four years, uh, there are 4,000 buyers. And our system grew into two parts, marketplace and real-time auction. First, I will give you some background and then introduce marketplace search feature. And finally, I will talk about real-time auction system with a demo. Okay, let's enter the first part, background. Uh, this is our secret tool for uh, incremental development, Kanban. Uh, does it seem like an obsolete analog tool? Actually, Kanban is the software version of Toyota production system. So Toyota uses this method to produce automobiles. Believe it or not. This is a bottom-up approach for managing projects. You can see the colorful cards here. Uh, they are tasks. You can move them toward delivery, right side, on pull basis. Developers should limit the number of active tasks at each stage. If some task stores in the flow, Team members should swarm to solve the task. It is a very simple way, but it just works. Initially, All Stocker was a tiny app with only four prerequisites. But now, there are over 1,000 classes. However, we have never felt that our development flow is getting stuck that is typically seen in large systems. Usually, we just concentrate on daily tasks in Kanban. Maybe we are too optimistic about the future. Why so optimistic? Part of the reason is that we are using small talk, of course. And the other reason is that we take polyglot microservices approach. Actually, there are lots of great open source software in the world. Sorabito is still a small startup company, so using such great software is a big gain. While we put Faro in the center of the system, we actively choose various programming languages, databases, and APIs for our purpose. Because Smalltalk is a very flexible language, we believe we can integrate these elements easily. That is our policy. Okay, now let's move on to the specific topic, search uh, marketplace, search increments. Please look at the pie chart. In all stocker, site events are recorded and categorized automatically. 
as you can see, most events are search or view. So users first search for some machines and then view the conditions and finally may buy. So improving the quality of search is really important for us. At the beginning, we decided to provide a full text search because it is basic and universal thing. Unfortunately, Smalltalk does not have a nice search engine in itself, so Elasticsearch Smalltalk was our choice. Do you know Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch is a kind of a de facto search engine between Java, and Elasticsearch Smalltalk is a connector to the search engine. What is good about Elasticsearch is that it supports multilingual content. Because Orsoka has worldwide customers, different languages are entered in search field. So we should optimize the search result according to the user's language. These snippets are from our working code. You can see various queries are combined to get the best result. Uh, look at the boost value parameter. Uh, the search score can be boosted dynamically depending on the current user's language. The next step was aggregation support. Uh, if many, many machines are just listed in flat list, uh, you cannot easily find what you want. Buyers would like to search machines by group, like category, maker, or model number. So we should provide flexible groupings. Full text search is apparently not enough for such complex aggregations. We also avoided RDB because it is hard to join tables in group. Therefore, we chose Neo4j graph database. This is our marketplace search model. You can see nodes in blue and the relationships in yellow. A machine belongs to a category. A machine is of a model, etc. Uh, they just represent plain facts, nothing special. So modeling in GraphDB is very straightforward. After defining the model, you can populate the data. Our client library is NeoForest. The sample code shows uh, creating two nodes and connecting them by a relationship. Now, you can retrieve nodes and links by Cypher query language. There are no joins. Just by pattern match, you can cut out a subset of the graph. So far, it's so good, however, a year later, we faced a new issue. Excavator needs more search options, packet capacity and operation weight. So special filters should be attached depending on the category. Originally, we just used hard-coded cipher with string concatenations that did not work with such a complicated spec filters. As a result, we made a new query generator, S-Cypher. In S-Cypher, uh, any Cypher element can be combined at runtime to get to generate a very complex query dynamically. 
by sending cipher string to a root query object, uh, you can get a valid executable cipher string. Now we have successfully delivered a sophisticated search. You can try it by yourself by visiting allstocker.com. Okay, I try this. Uh, you can uh, enter the free word here, but uh, today I will just use auto completion. So now you can see the search results. And the search results can be uh, aggregated by model number. So now uh, search results are aggregated by model number. So uh, you can see PC 102 and uh, 220 series uh, here. Okay, I'll add more, uh, more groupings. Okay, now I, I will add maker and category filter. And you, you may notice that the special filters just appeared here. They are spec filters, especially for uh, excavators. Okay, I, fil I filter the result more. So you can see uh, meaningful results are here. So I will check the more details. Now I can compare the prices of the Use the machines. Okay, this, this seems this seems uh, nice. It's a bargain. So let's see the details. You can you can actually see the details in pictures or uh, some condition reports. And you can buy here. Okay, this is the uh, topic of the search increments. Okay, now back to the slide. Oops, I, I lost my window. <laughs> Okay, come back. Okay, let's move on to the last topic, auction increments. In auction system, uh, the real-time information must be displayed automatically. If not, users would lose their chances to bid. They will never use such a system again. So we made a highly reactive system using uh, these components. Okay, so time hold demo again. Hello, uh, I'm Karunori Ueda. Uh, Mr. Mezawa described me as a full stack developer 
uh, but in fact, uh, I'm just a handyman. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's start the demo. Uh, there are two browsers. Uh, the left side one is via one, and the right side one is via two. And via one is opening a beating dashboard page. And on this page, you can check and bid for watching items. The other side, via two, is opening a login page. Oh, oh no, oh. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, if the login is successful and an auction event is opening, you will be redirected to the auction event top page. This page uh, lists auction items, excavators, rewarders, rollers, friends, etc. Uh, but this is a demo site, so images are not real. But in a real auction, various construction equipment and machineries are listed on this page. If you are interested in an item, you can add it to your watch list. So I like the newest farm machine, so I check it. And which do you like to buy? This, do you like the squeak machine? Okay, uh, but I like the next one, so sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, it's a joke. Uh, I check it too. Uh, and And okay, so, so you, now you can see checked items on the bidding dashboard page, and yes, and buyers can access an item details page. Uh, on this page, you can download all photos and condition report of the machine. But it's a demo, so only one photo. <laughs> okay, uh, and of course you can bid the on this machine. Now I will bid for on the machine, okay? When I bid this machine, uh, soon uh, the other client receives a bid notification at the same time. And on the other side, buy a one, bid uh, this item to win, okay? So the other client receives a notification soon. Uh, see that? Uh, the notification appears on details page and beating dashboard page at the same time. And okay, so next, uh, let me show you uh, auto beating feature. Uh, if the if you enter a target price. So this, uh, you, uh, the system will put counter bids automatically until the limit comes. Now put an auto bid. And now buy a bid, bid again. But uh, the system automatically puts a counter bid. So uh, buy, a, buy a two uh, can't become a highest bidder. See like that. Uh, I rebid and uh, immediately put a counter bid from via one. Okay, uh, it's the auto bidding feature. If you're interested in the auction system, uh, please visit allstocker.com/auction, and you are able to log in by your SNS account, and you may browse real auction items while the auction is open. Uh, that's all for demo. Thank you. Okay, now returning to the some explanation of the auction system. Okay, let's get back to the slide. Uh, it may be a bit difficult to see, but the figure shows how client and the server are connected. You can see the bid request is directly posted to RAM bid server. 
This is done by HTTP POST. Other normal requests are directed to follow, again using HTTP. Please see the inverse errors. They are WebSocket notifications. They are asynchronous and pushed from servers. This architecture seems nice. Actually, it worked about one year and a half. However, a serious incident happened. Our system failed to respond timely because of increased users and many auction items. All the users were forced to be logged out uh, in heavy load time. This issue damaged our business, so we had to reinforce the auction system as soon as possible. Our team planned three strategies. Let's go into details one by one. First, we looked for ways to reduce push. In the original version, users got periodic updates on all the auction items, but it clearly slowed down as the number of items increased. So we changed each client to have its own item list. Now each client gets notifications only when the related items are updated. We also changed the push protocol. Instead of WebSocket, SSE was adopted, server sent event. Why SSE? This is because we would like to reduce the number of connections too. Many simultaneous connections consume network resources. This would prevent new logins and a heavy load. First, we switched our site to HTTP2. This was actually easy, just added the world to nginx config file. In HTTP2, many requests are multiplexed in a single connection. While WebSocket is a completely different protocol, SSE is a family is based on HTTP. Thus, not only normal requests, but also notifications can be mixed in one connection. That is why we adopted SSE. Luckily, there is a nice SSE library in server sent events, so rewriting was smooth. The last trial was dividing Faro image. In fact, CPU resources were not fully utilized. While while RAM process was up for each auction item, there was only one file image for many items. Running one image means that you can only use one CPU core. In order to use more CPU resources, we divided file image into three. Two application servers for serving pages and one webhook server for interacting with the bit server. Application servers subscribe to webhook server via Redis PubSub protocol so that webhook server sends notifications. At that time, Faro did not have a stable Redis library, so a new client, RedisTick, was developed. RedisTick supports auto reconnection. Even if there is a temporary loss of network, it recovers. This is important for making PubSub reliable. Two Faro web app servers are available now. The next question is how to dispatch users to these servers. The solution was to use NGX upstream. We defined auction upstream. It holds two Faro servers. If a request comes to the upstream, NGX transfer the request to auction one or auction two server. The dispatch is done in a sticky way, so the same user always accesses the same server. This figure shows the revised version. Uh, it may be harder to see, but you can recognize that the three file images are up and running, and connected by Redis. And the result was great. 
This is the output of top command during actual auction time. You can see three follow images use CPU cores, respectively. In the revised architecture, we can operate 100 auction items without any problems. Now, finishing, uh, we showed how all Stocker has evolved its services incrementally. Faro always plays an important role in our system. We will keep on going, so please stay tuned. Any questions? Thank you very much. Yes, hi. Uh, I have more experience in Erlang than in uh, Smalltalk of Faro. I'm trying to understand on the architecture slide yeah. uh, what exactly you're using Erlang for. Because if Smalltalk can handle the web sockets and it has connection to Reddit, why do you need Erlang there? Well, what does it do exactly, the bit server? Can you maybe tell a little bit of this? A little details? Uh, sorry, I don't understand your question. Well. Uh, ah, well, why do you need Erlang there? This is the question. About the libraries or? Well, in general, why, why did you choose to insert Erlang oh. between uh, Smalltalk and the oh, user? I see. So why I choose, uh, why our team uh, select Erlang for bit, bit server? Because uh, in auction system, there is a very uh, critical period uh, uh, exists. For example, in last five minutes, a very, very important for many buyers. So, uh, so uh, system crash is never acceptable in such period. So we, uh, we should be very, we should make system very robust. For that purpose, we researched some uh, server architecture. And finally, we selected ARA because ARA is, uh, has a history of making such robust servers. So I selected server to the bitting core. And uh, for representation logic, uh, we used uh, Seaside in marketplace systems. So we use like to use uh, continuously using such architecture. So uh, to, to part of the system are composed. So just tell me if I understand this correctly. So the, the website may, may go down, but the bidding server will still work. Yes, right? it still is, works. Okay. And uh, one more question I had, when you had the auto bidding feature, what yeah. happens is if several people click out the bidding, it will go up to like infinity or something? Oh, uh, the higher limit is unlimited. So you can actually uh, tremendous <laughs> higher price, but okay. uh, time is limited. I see. So, yeah. So usually, uh, some some price will be decided. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Okay. Thank you very much.